Yo, let, let, let's get into it. Let's let's get straight into it. Uh, I oftentimes hear ladies define men. I I I rarely hear men define men. I hear ladies say, hey, this is this is a man. Man do this, man do that, and, and a man should do this. But I never hear what we as men tell each other, that's a man. You should be this. I'm curious, what's your definition of a man? What's going on, my friends? Before we get to the ladies hear him out panel, I want to thank our friends over at Bethel Tech for partnering with us to make this happen. You see, one of the rising industries that's producing multi-millionaires and six-figure heirs is the tech industry. My friends over at Bethel Tech is the number one leading technology institution in the United States of America, and they want to help you get into the tech industry to double your salary, to double your income. I want you to go check them out over at anthonyoneal.com slash Bethel. That is anthonyoneal.com forward slash Bethel. Yo, give yourself nine months, nine months with this program and watch you double your income in nine. Your life can be different by this time. But in the meantime, let's change your life with this conversation with my brothers. Let's go. I guess I'll start. Uh, I say a provider, a protector. Uh, I want to see your lady or your woman, um, you know, live life as stress free as possible. And just taking care of the people that, that love you and taking care of people that, um, you know, that's around you in your circle. That's, what's, that's what a man is to me. First thought that comes to my mind is a builder. And that's someone that can take something from concept to completion. Like, I can paint a picture and then I can walk the steps to actually get myself, my family, my community, whatever it is, to a destination. Builder. Yeah, I would I would definitely say to add to that, I would add re, you know, responsible. When I think of a man, I think about responsibility and uh most definitely I think of somebody who's willing to sacrifice, you know, put put you know a lot of things before ourselves. You know, I think that's part of being a provider for sure. Um I, I would say as as a father myself, um definitely being a teacher, um being there emotionally um for your your wife, your family, uh being a visionary. Um, as Pastor talked about painting that picture, being a, vi a visionary is super important. Um, and, and that lady next to you, ladies, is being that implementer uh, for that visionary um, and that support. So that's uh, me. So <laughs> it's the trouble one right here. Let's go, Dr. Dun, dun, dun. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to define myself without including you or community in it. So you can understand like what, I, what the essence of this man is. Um, oh God! Jesus. So, <laughs> I can't. I can't. Hold up. Hey, I need to Good ask you. What was your intentions about being on this panel today? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, hey. Oh, oh. You know, this is what I'm gonna do. Because what he just I'm said was, my, uh, I am the my, man. My <laughs> Oh, now, now, now you asked me to come on now. <laughs> after we after we had a conversation, All right, so um, I guess men. When I say men, I'm talking about me. <laughs> I, um, I want I want to challenge. I want to conquer. I want to define myself by my own rituals that I create for myself. And what I mean by that is my task in life is to figure out me. So then by that, I can give that to, to the world, to the community, to my wife, et cetera. And so um, I'm a little bit different from what, how men are defined today because I grew up, I grew up like fighting was something was normal for me. Like me and my cousins, like, it was normal to dump each other on the, on top of each other's heads, and I like that. Now I know I can't operate like that today. Like it's different. Like today is different. But you know, uh, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because like I I believe that all men want to challenge themselves so that they can figure out who they are. Like a lot of us want to experience ourselves through challenge. Now today, a lot of men are experiencing that challenge by playing like NBA 2K and Call of Duty. Um, but me, 
I define myself through my vision, which is where I create a lot of my challenges. And so I believe that, in essence, that's what a, like a man is. Like we want to explore, we want to challenge, we want to see who we really are, and then we can determine <clears throat> how we give the world who we are. So I'll probably be start off honest. My first vision of defining of a man was skewed um, because how I was raised. Hood, get all you can, can all you get. So I thought a man with a man, and most women would define him as a whore. As I matured and evolved, I realized my definition was based upon the environment I was raised in. So I had to detox from the old definition and come up with a new one. So now it's more of, I think a man is one who has the ability to evolve and not stay stuck in one arena. You know, <clears throat> building, evolving, conquering, I think, I think all of that is a great definition of what, what men are, right? I think where I want to go next, let's, let's, let's go deeper. Does a woman play a role in confirming manhood? No. No. The answer is no. Just like a man does not define what a woman is, women define what a real woman is. Men define what a real man is. See, when I hear all these things, I hear community asset. It's not a uh, protector and provider of my family. It's about the masses, whatever, however far your arms extend. So if I can provide for my community, doctor, right? You're doing something bigger for the people. And I think men have to protect the community, not just your family, that's an easy job, or should be, right? And men have to provide an asset for the community so then we can do what? Build the community. Same thing with women, right? Women have to do whatever it is that women find for them to be defined as a woman. Us men need to define men, and we do. If you can only take care of you and your family, I know you're not an asset to us. So I leave you alone and take care of your friend, or your family, and you know what I'm saying? Go ahead, sir. I disagree. Uh -oh. I Love disagree. Um, I do believe women play a part because without women, what are we doing all of this for? I, I, think, I think women give us the drive to make sure that the community is safe make sure that we are providing for the family. And I, I disagree also. A man who is doing for his family is still doing for the community because he's teaching those kids how to be proper, proper people in society. So I think all of those things kind of play a part. So I do think, I think it's negligent to say that women don't play a major part in what, we, what shapes us as men because they do, 100%. I mean, I, I, I don't want to... Let's, let's nope, we're gonna have some no, go there. Let's go there. It's a conversation. Let's go. I'm not here to be right. I'm here to be real. <laughs> um, what I will say is, I mean, yes, to, if we want to talk in general terms, there are many different things, women included, that play a part in depicting what a man is. But if we're talking about the majority term, when I see a man, I don't say he's a man because he can just provide for his family. And although he might do a great job, he's a smaller man than a man who's providing for the community. See, there's levels to being a man, right? And you start off as a male, and then you gradually become a man. But in order for you to become a man, you have to add a multiple different assets to the world and benefits to the world before I can say, hey, look, you're a man of, I guess, quality? Right? When a woman sees a man, a woman doesn't see a man and say, hey, he takes care of his, fa uh, his, his family and he provides for his family, whatever that may look like in 2022, and thinks that he's the idealistic man. They think of the idealistic man as the man that's providing for more than one. You know what I mean? So it depends on what level you want to start at or what level we're talking about. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to play the spiritual role now. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. 
<laughs> Thanks I'm, for letting I'm, us know. Yes. I want to play the spiritual role. When God creates man, he says he created everything else and said it's not good for man to be alone. It was a reason he said that. Because we don't have the capacity to become without them. So it's, it's, it's not negative towards a man. It's positive to have that asset in your corner. Here's this. So when I say, when I think of what you said, I'm not here to say who's wrong or right. I'm, when I think of what you said, I think when the right woman is a pillow and a pillar, she helps you become the man. I, I actually like the pillow, though. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I'm here for the pillow. Yeah. But, so I'm, and, and as a man, I need to come home to a pillow. But I need her to be a pillar when I give her my vision, and she can hold it. So I'm... I'm, so I'm, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm not saying who's right. I'm saying to become a man, she helps me to become that. Yes, now, I'm not talking gender. I'm not talking... I have a question for you, Pastor. Oh, no, 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 we good. Yeah, we good. I'm just, I'm just asking. You, you, I'm just asking. I'm just asking. <laughs> That's Rico. Let's go. I'm asking for a friend. Do women... So if he's not a man, what are we going to call him at that point? He hasn't found a woman. What are we calling him? So... So now we got to go to what we talked about upstairs. What is your definition when you say a man? So when you say a man, community, you're building a community. Husband, wife, children. Now if you're saying male, what he's birth, that's a whole nother issue. So when you say a man, most people, I won't say male or women, most people divide, define somebody based off of their own experience. Mm. Mm. Not by the real definition. Mm. So when you say a man, a man to him may mean something different to me, may mean something different to her. So then it, it all evolves around the person who you're talking to when you say Pastor, that. I get that. Let's, let's, let's get to so it. So you want to be real? Okay. Yeah, because uh, we're doing a lot. Okay. Let's get to it. <laughs> yeah, because my thing is... What is it? Do, Doctor, when, please. I talk to the pastor. I need him. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need a doctor right now. I need a pastor. <laughs> I'm just curious. I'm just curious because we said a woman helps him become a man, right? So my question is, does that mean he's not a man when they first meet them? And are women okay with accepting the fact that they're not meeting a man at first? That's my question, Pastor. That's a good question. I think I think the bigger question. That's a good question. That's a different question. But I think the bigger I think the the bigger question is this, right? Is this being real? Do women even know what a man is? Because a lot of them may not have been raised by a man. So now that they got their own definition, what if a man, what if women out here thinking that they have a man when they don't, and they end up getting hurt because they thought from what they was taught that they had something? So now I'm gonna even answer that. Let's be honest. Some of us were boys until we met her, and she made us become a man. So I'm. I'm not, we just being real. Okay. Not right. But you did jump over his so, question though. Yeah, yeah, so. The, the, is it the possible, one? is it possible for someone to make someone something that they've never been? The argument I'm bringing up, I think it takes a real man to turn a boy into a man. And women can support a man's vision, they can affirm them, then they encourage them. But it takes a, whether it's from a far off role model or it's a hand on nurturing, I think it takes a real man to turn a boy into a man. Yeah. And if a wife, a girlfriend tries to turn her boyfriend or husband into a man, she's now forming and fashioning him and controlling him in a way that he will always push back against. Here's why I'm going to push back on that. Uh-oh. Uh Go ahead. This is why I'm pushing now the back. pastor's pushing back? <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, this is good. I know these two. They can go this... He know we... Lord Jesus, we ain't got that much time. <laughs> I understand what you say from afar off, but when you're raised by a single mother that doesn't have the support system, yeah. she has to have some type of attribute to contribute to who you are. Now, I'm not saying... If every man stay where he's supposed to be, this wouldn't even be an argument. Yeah. Would this be null and void? But what I'm saying, I'm not exclusively saying I'm right or wrong. I'm saying there is room 
for her to help to me to value. become yeah, yeah, yeah. and Definitely. add value to me becoming a man. Definitely. Yeah. I agree. To a little bit. <laughs> well, I, I, I want to. I, I don't. I don't believe that a woman can raise a man. I just. No. I just don't. But yeah. you introduced yourself as saying I was given a model of unhealthy men. Exactly. So Absolutely. I had to relearn manhood. Right. So even a man who's not healthy himself can't raise a healthy Ooh. man. So it's not like single mom versus man. You need a healthy man to, to raise, raise up healthy a healthy man. man. That's good. I'll be uh, very transparent. My mother is a great woman. I was raised by a single mother majority of my life, okay? She's a woman who defined so many odds, and I admire her for it. You know, for her getting all 17 and pregnant with me, 19 and pregnant with my sister, and still having no help, no support system, maintaining to get three, de three degrees and becoming a supervisor of the Board of Ed for New Jersey. Okay, she's a dope woman, strong woman, right? Smart, intelligent, educated woman. However, she instilled so many great qualities into me, but I still was not a man until I got my stepfather, a healthy stepfather. Right, and um, although I take a lot of the things that she taught, taught me and instilled into me, the man had to show me how to be a man and stand firm as a man, as well as she did. You know, I'm not I'm not negating what she did, but like he was the finishing touches. You know, he, she put all the recipes. He was able he was able to be the oven to. Yeah, I want to say one more thing. I know we gotta you know probably move on, but I gotta say this. I think another definition of a man that we have to add in there, fellas, is someone who know how to express his emotions. You know, because I was raised in a household with my mom, even though I had my dad, neither one of them showed me any type of emotions, even though I knew that they loved me. But I think a lot of times, man, we want to hear it from our women. And I think I fought it for so long and I wasn't a good man to my women because I didn't know how to express my emotions. So I think I want to add that in there for sure. So let, let, let's, let's go there real quick then. Let, let's go deeper as men. Why do we as men have a problem? <laughs> Say it. The, the question that was posed to me from ladies was that men have a hard time. They really do not show, we do not show our femininity side. Do y'all believe as men... <laughs> <laughs> that we have a feminine side to us as men. Let's talk biology, doctor. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, here's the, here's the thing. I think, the, I think what happens with women is women want us also to be their, their girlfriend. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Hold up. He didn't say he was right. Y'all are not supposed he to be talking. <laughs> trigger, trigger alert. Look. And, and what I mean by that is I will never be able to communicate with you like your girlfriend communicates with you. And to ask me to do that, you're putting me in a bad position. I'm not built like that. So a woman should never come to a man to get that. But should a woman ask? That's what I'm asking. Mm -hmm. you, 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 kind of, you, went, you went in. But you didn't ask the question. Answer the question. I interrupted. Do men have a feminine side? Do we have feminine energy? No. No. So, no. catch up in. Go ahead. Go for it. No. We do not. No. no. Do you be, okay, answer this question. Do you believe women have masculine energy? Some do, but they shouldn't. <laughs> so, can I? Hold on real quick. Real quick. So, so, so I wanna, I wanna, I wanna read something to y'all real quick. When we talk about fem, so femininity, femininity, is what we're talking about specifically. So before we say it's a yes, we would, we would need to rephrase that to sensitive, emotional, vulnerability. Um, but when we say feminine, that takes it to a whole nother, a whole nother level. So femininity is qualities or attributes regarded as characteristics of women. Women. Who would want any? Womenly trait in their in their man. If if that's what we're talking about, we're talking about men. <clears throat> so as a husband, as a father of three girls, I would tell you that the answer to that question is no. One because when we're raising up these young women, we want to show them a true example of what a man is. Come on, 
you want them to be sensitive, you want vulnerability, you want leadership, you want all of those qualities, but you never want to show your daughter that it's okay for a man to act in a feminine way. You want to take charge of things. So for me, being sensitive, crying, different things like that, showing that, I think our culture has kind of spun that in a way to where it's not acceptable, yeah. where growing up, I could tell you right now, I've never seen my father cry, never. But my daughters, they'll tell you they've seen their father cry. They saw their father cry when their hamster died because I wanted to connect with them to make sure that they understood that I felt what they felt. A hamster? I ain't crying over no hamster, bro. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, bro. I was with you to the hamster. Now, peep it. Now, now, listen. 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 Hold on. I just need to go. Hold up, bro. Never did. But what hurt me more was that something that they cared so much about, and it was the significance of what real it though. to them, That's real. that hurt me. You know, I want to touch on that culture piece, and I mentioned this uh, on, 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 on your show. I do think, man, and, and you, you mentioned this too, I do think black men in America, specifically, culturally, we have been taught manhood in such a toxic Absolutely. way. Absolutely. And I think that, you know, as I have evolved as a man with my lady, right? It's so many things now that we, you know, we're deep into our relationship now, right? So I'm able to have more real and honest exchanges with her and none of those kind of exchanges I was able to have at the beginning. I remember you also mentioned that you was honest with a lady about how you felt. And, and I told you, that it probably wasn't even wise to be that honest with that lady at the beginning. And the reason why I say that, man, is because our women are even indoctrinated with a toxic culture of, 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 of relationship. You know what I mean? Like, you know, we'll treat, we'll, we're raised literally to treat our women like bitches, like hoes. That's how we refer to our women. That's how we, how we connect. We, we, the women are trained through songs and indoctrination that you should, you should bleed this man. You should take everything from this man, leave him dry, don't care about him. That's the way we're, 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 we're trained in our culture. And so it wasn't until I started getting in books that I started to like unpack a lot of that stuff and start recognizing that this, this, is, this is perverse. You know what I'm saying? And, and so now with my lady, I'm able to kind of have those more real conversations, but it took years to get to that space. So let me answer this question, because I want to get Diddy and uh, Cyrus in yeah. on this too. Kick it. Let's... No, I'm not going to mess you up. Go ahead, go, go ahead, go, go. No, nah, you're the only one on this stage. You're my pastor. Go ahead, man. Go ahead. I'm going to throw one thing out, because I want to go back to what you said earlier when you introduced yourself. You said, I grew up throwing my cousin on his head and fighting and all that, but it's not accepted today. Yeah. Here's the problem. We're trying to make manhood one dimensional mm. when there are different dimensions to a man. Mm. And here is what an unhealthy man is. A man that doesn't understand what space he's supposed to live out different dimensions. An aggressive man in the right space is a man. Yes. An aggressive man in the wrong space is an abuser or whatever it may be. And we've got to learn that manhood is sensitivity in the right place where you're supposed to be sensitive and aggressive in the right place. And if you don't understand that, and you're talking about society. So sensitivity and feminism is now synonymous. So we're so we can't show our sensitive side because now you're acting like a woman. No, we can't accept this one dimensional mindset of what a man is. A man is knowing who to be in what room at the right time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Now, now, now the pastors may not like this conversation. We about to go, we about, let, let's, let's go even, let's go deeper. Let's leave the church. We're going to step out the church and we're going to step into Rico's world. If y'all follow it. Rico, so he talks about this all the time. Let's talk about sex. Love it. Um, I, I, had, I was dating a young lady, right? So I'm, I'm very honest. If y'all follow me, I'm, I'm, I have no shame in my game. My pastor knows this. Pastor Don said it on my show. I tell every lady, listen, man, this is what I want up front. You got to be safe, sweet, skilled, smart, and what? Very sexual. 
I say it up front. First date, first time, you gotta be safe, sweet, smart, skilled, and very sexual. As soon as I put the word sexual in there, it's like, oh my gosh, all you want <laughs> is sex. The first word I said was saved. The second word, I didn't even say sex first. I said, you gotta be sweet. And the very, the only thing we talk about is all he want is sex. And you know what? This is what I say. That's not all I want, but dad going it, I want it. <laughs> Why is it? And forget that the ladies are in the building, right? Ladies value provision. Men value. I'm, 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 we gonna go there. We ain't. We, ain't, we, ain't, we want good sex. Let's just be real. Now y'all married. You know what I'm saying? Clearly, y'all got kids. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we clearly know. <laughs> 30 years? I mean, it's been good in 30 years? Oh, I ain't going to, well, my sister here, let me be quiet. Uh, <laughs> so so, so, so I, I want to ask a question then, because one lady told me, she said, hey, listen, you're not getting sex. I said, great, cool, great, no problem. I said, so don't ask me for any money. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you start the conversation, bro? It's, no, 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 no. Listen, let's check this out. Here's why I did it. Because if I said I want saved first, sweet next, and the last thing I said was a very sexual woman, and all you're leading with is all I want is sex, and you didn't entertain the other four things, I was like, listen, so since you're going to go there, let me go straight there too. Do not ask me to take you on no fine dining. Don't ask me to take you on no vacation. Christmas is coming up. Don't ask me for nothing. <laughs> Do men value... Do we, the way ladies value money, do we value sex the same? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. This, Rico. Like, let's be real. I, I mean, I don't know about everybody here on the panel. We all have had different lives. But me, myself included, right? I know a lot of men who had had sex on the first date turn it with one, two, three, four, five year relationship. You know, sometimes they only knew each other for five, six days. Is that a long time? I mean, for me, yeah. <laughs> five years. Listen, I mean, that is a long time to single people. Yeah. I mean, not, not compared to Pastor and you, 17 to 30. I commend you both, by the way. Uh, but what I'm saying is, I'm just saying we do appreciate sex. And sometimes I think women can get it confused that we think that... and and. Rightfully so, because there are men that do think like this. But if they give up the sex too early, that's going to limit their chances of being taken serious. And I think that we got to actually tell them that there's a lot of other things that we're looking for, and the sex is just a bonus. You know, if you can do the other four things that I'm asking or he's asking, and then the sex is, you know, good, then it doesn't matter when you give it, because you're still hitting all the check, mar check marks that I'm having for you. And anybody well, who says that they don't value sex in here in the panel is lying. <laughs> y'all I mean, quiet. We, we, we see, I mean, even historically, we see the exchanges always happen throughout history where whenever parents saw a man that was successful and then they would want to marry off their daughter to that successful man, one of the things, one of the bargaining chips was not just her femininity, but her purity and the fact that she will be sexual exclusively with you. And that's something you could look at different cultures around the world. That's something that's been consistent. Yeah. So, yeah, that is like one of the different fair exchanges. But, and, and we have to take into consideration that every woman is not very sexual. And I think that's why, like you said it earlier before that, you know, basically being too honest too soon could be detrimental. And I think that it's a savior. If I tell you the five things that I need or that I need right now, because our needs do change right within time, possibly, um, and you can fulfill those, then there's no disconnect, there's no miscommunication between us, and hopefully we build to something that's going to be better. You know what I'm saying? And I think that if I say I want a very sexual woman, I, I hope that the woman that I'm speaking to understands her level of sexual, you know, right. competence? Come on, Come on Joy, I'm, I'm looking for the word, help me out. <laughs> Sexual but like, but like, cause some women could be cool with having sex once every two weeks. 
Yeah. But if my yeah. sexual that's, appetite that's, is, that's the devil. is is and that's what I want to talk about. You know, that's the I, devil. I'm sorry, I right. didn't talk. Once every two weeks. <laughs> but but notice, I don't know this. What? But notice what you see. That's I'm, I'm take I'm, her out I'm, once every other month. I'm man. out. I'm out the church, but I'm gonna be in the church. Oh, there, there, there's a scripture. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> week. We have sex Thursday. I'm taking you out to dinner afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so, um. I'm going to be out the church, but I'm going to be in the church. There's a scripture in Solomon that says, don't open my love before it's time. So when he says that, opening my love sexual creates an appetite. So when I say I want my woman to be sexual, you probably need to explain your appetite to her. Because sexuality to her may be once a week, twice a week, three times a week. You know, it, that, that may be the exchange. So if we don't have a medium of exchange, it's not that she's not sexual. I just wasn't clear when I say when I want to be sexual. Because most of our appetite is taught before we met her. So if we, get, if we created an appetite throwing ones, throwing fives, and she's stripping on a pole. Jesus. And then now she's working, coming home, saying, ain't no poles in my house. And you're like, baby, but I'm sexual. See, we create appetite. I'm not saying we're right or wrong. I'm saying we also have that communication to say, listen, this is what I'm created when I say sexual. Mm. This is my appetite. And if she can't cook that, I would suggest that you move on. Mm. So that way you don't create yeah. damage in her. And you find yourself looking at a side chick. So then based on that, right, ba based on that, so you're saying, pastor, right. who told me to get the booty and the Bible, you are saying that if a woman says that she only wants to have sex once every other week, but she's a good woman. Move on. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you this. Nah, hey. bro. Leave. Oh, hold on, pastors. So, I, I need to get. Leave. I need, hold on. Leave. But wait, 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 wait. Hold on, wait, okay, wait. I'll, I'll let me I'm gonna be honest because listen, I'm that's it. not what I was taught. My mama taught me. What did my mama and daddy teach me? If she's a good woman, if she loves God, yeah, yeah. if she can pray for you, it's <laughs> not about the Bible. She so y'all telling woman. me she ain't a good woman. She's a woman a having thing. sex every she's other week a, is not, not a good woman. woman. She's not a good woman for you. For you. There we go. I just wanted y'all to say that. So you talked about appetite. Let's change the conversation. Yeah. If she says we're only going to have food once a week, <laughs> can't happen. Why not? Because you're going to Because I'm, I'm going to I'm, I'm going to cook. Dragon. Right. Now you're no no no. Not, I didn't say that she's going to cook for you once a week. Right. We're only allowed to have food in our house once a week. Oh heck no. Why not? Because I got to eat. You going to eat somewhere? So else? why do we think that Damn. God made us? Going to eat somewhere else. Oh. Why do we Don't think that God? <laughs> So, so I want to come from a different perspective. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let, 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 let me, let me let, let Why do we think that God made us with an appetite for food, but he didn't make us for an appetite for sex? He did? He did? He, did? he, he, did? Heck yeah, he, he said did. he did. He did. Yeah. Oh, he did. Oh, oh. <laughs> so, so hold on, hold on. Now we get all extreme. So a woman that only wants us to eat food once a week, we would say she's crazy. She's trying to abuse us or whatever. Same thing for a woman that only wants us to eat sexually once a week. She's trying no, to make no. us live. I, I'm, I'm, don't, don't, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> don't, ho. So, okay, so two things. One, just I'm just using once a week as an example. I'm not saying that that's law. And the other thing is marriage is something where I only win when I'm willing to serve my spouse's needs. So that's there's, it. So there's going to be seasons of her life that's where good. she's not able to give me what I need, and I've got to die to myself. And then there's the opposite. But that's good. In an ideal week. I need you to preach that word, Pastor. You're, 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 you're stress-free, life uh, is good, nothing's wrong. In your ideal week, if you only try to feed me once a week, you ain't it. I, we got problems. I'm not right, disagreeing with you. Only thing I'm, I'm if saying. we're being real, not being right, yeah, yeah. in this scenario, what I'm saying is if I created an appetite that caused me to be obese. Yeah, yeah. Gluttony. So, and now I'm getting married to a healthy woman. So, but, no, that's so, not because I don't. Wait, you must be no. Oh. So here's See, where the, the doctor why, comes in. The, the reason why I don't get that is because I know we're not supposed to be. We're not in the church right now. But the reason why that doesn't make sense to me is because the Bible even addresses saying not depriving your spouse of sex. It never says you can have too much sex with you your spouse. You better preach. So anything taken out of context become a pretext to say what we want. Yeah. So 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 Ayo, when he, I'm sorry. I'm, so wait, Pat, you. You saying that a man can actually desire too much sex? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, from his yes. wife. From his wife. Define from his woman. Sex. So, define it. 
It's not definable. Too much sex is big. And after 30 years, she say, babe, you asking me for too much right now. I should serve her need and put my need aside and say, what do you need from me? In so you now. No, you, no, yeah. let, me, let me say something. It is season. Whenever I, I want you to look at, at look outside. Whenever you suppress a behavior, it comes out vile. That's what happens with priests. That's why they rape little boys. Whenever I, apples and orange. Listen, no, 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 no. Apples with, and with, with Catholic with clat. <laughs> With Catholic priests, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, I want, they I want have to, to swear I want, I want off to hear sex. This. I want to hear this. I want to hear this. No, no, no. Hold what? up. With Catholic priests, they swear off sex. They okay. don't have sex at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Loki, I don't think people listening. I don't think people listening to what he's saying. They're not, they're not he, listening. He, 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 don't, don't react. They're not listening. Listen, listen yeah, yeah, yeah. to what he's saying. Yeah. Catholic priests do not have sex. They're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> what happens when you suppress a natural urge? It always comes out vile. That's not true. I can suppress my. So, nah, Pastor, that's true, man. He said natural. He said natural. Pastor, he said natural. He said natural. Pastor, let's be real. I grew up Church of God in Christ. I was suppressed. I couldn't go to prom. I couldn't do. I couldn't go to football games. I couldn't do none of that. The moment I graduated high school. But I that, went to the strip club. That was you. That, I went to see booty, that, butt that, cheeks. No. I, I was like, yo, I'll have sex yeah, with anything it because it was forced oh. to suppress. But that was you. Don't, and that's a problem we that's do. Yeah. We make us everybody. Since I did it, everybody going to do it. No, but what he's saying is that if you're saying that naturally. Now, he's saying natural. He's not natural. saying forced things. Like he's na okay. Men naturally want to have sex. So if you say, nope, you're not having sex at all. It can go wrong. Something is going to happen. First of all, I did not say at all. Well, well, yeah. well. Hey, you guys, I had to take a quick break to thank one of our partners, Prize Pool, for partnering with us to bring uh, this amazing panel to conversation with healthy men. You know, Prize Pool is the leading savings account in the United States of America, in my personal opinion. Why? Because they have a high yielded savings account. They're going to give you high yielded on your returns of interest. Um, and then also, they're going to give you some rewards for just parking your money inside of your savings account. What do, we, what do I mean by that? Let me tell you. They're going to give you $100, $200. They're going to have some grand prizes of $5,000, $10,000, $20,000. I don't know. They surprise us every single month. All you have to do is open up the savings account with no limit necessary, but I highly suggest at least $500. Um, you go over there, you get approved, you get in an account, you save the money, you're going to have $1,000. Did you know that nearly 40%, 50% of people in America can't even save $400 in a savings account? But you can you will. All you have to do is go over to anthonyoneal.com slash savings account. Go over there and win. Get a high yield on your returns. Get some extra cash. Hey, you never know. You may win $500, $1,000, or $10,000. Go over to anthonyoneal.com slash savings and open up a free savings account today. Yo, let's get back to the conversation. <laughs> it was getting pretty good. You said that if your woman couldn't give you sex... For whatever reason, whether it was ill or just couldn't give you sex for whatever, you just gonna, you just gonna, you, you ain't gonna, you ain't gonna step out. It ain't a possibility so, so you gonna step out keeping it real. I literally just real said, not right. I really literally <laughs> just said if give me the scenario. Okay, let's if, say if, 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 if she, let me give you the scenario. If she get in a car accident and she can't have no sex for like three years. No anecdotal. No. I got it. 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 Yeah. Look. You mean to tell me? But to give you the answer. My testosterone is like 850. I have sex every day with the woman I'm with. Damn. So I'm not the kind of man yeah, yeah, where yeah. it works out like you that. You out of there. I'm not. I'm not so you going to step out the house? It's going to be a conversation, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to keep it so, real. So, so, got to keep it real. <laughs> hey, but so, I'm going to say this real quick. I'm Let's be go, honest. Diddy. So I'm going to speak from experience, right? You know, like we talked about in the back, like I've been married for a year now, right? But years ago, way before I was married, you know, when me and my wife, we first had our son, my weaknesses got exposed. And the reason why I say that is, is that I was used to having sex all the time. When that sex got pulled back and I didn't understand the postpartum situation, and ladies, y'all got to educate us better on them situations too, by the way. Guess what happened? 
I fell deep into masturbation because I wasn't getting what I was used to and my weaknesses was exposed. So I'm telling y'all, ladies, I understand y'all get mad that we don't understand that situation y'all going through. Educate us. One thing about a real man, we love being educated by our queen. So I want to let y'all know that for sure. One of the things, <clears throat> uh, Jesus, <laughs> Doc said, we're going to have a conversation. Is sex in our top three? Hell yeah. Definitely. That's number one. If it's, if it's not number one, one if it's one. not one, no, top two. No. Probably, it's probably, top probably three, two. not one. Top, yeah, probably two. One I is, said, is it top one three? Is physical. Two. One is beauty. Yeah, one is beauty. She's beautiful. That's one. 1A, 1B. 1A, 1B. That's, yeah. Hyphen, hyphen. Who? But you know what? I would, I would last longer in a relationship wise, I'll last longer with a beautiful woman who has subpar sex than I would with the woman who has great sex, but she's subpar beautiful. Facts. Beautiful. Facts. I'm a visual person. If I wake up, first of all, if I, if I really love you, all I got to do is really look at you. You know what I'm saying? And, and everything else is going to follow. If I, if I love you for the type of person you are... <laughs> Because, because it's going to take a little sex, bit more for me to get the sex, <laughs> the sex piece can be learned. That can be learned. You can, you can, train, you can train on that. You can, it's all kinds of professionals to help on the sexual side. But the, the look, you can't, you can't do nothing about that. Sex so are we saying that all of us on this stage agree that a woman has to be physically good looking to us, period? Yes, one hundred percent. Definitely, yes, it, yes, especially if you yes, want me to act right. Yes, if, if not, you're out searching. You're so if, yeah, if, it's, she, if it's not, yeah. if she's not physically appealing, you go find somebody. You're that gonna is. find somebody else. That's the longevity of a marriage. On top of anything else, if as long as she's attractive to you physically, you're not gonna go search for that. Because so I got it. I got in trouble for that same question. I didn't get in trouble. So so the question he asked me was that particular question. And I said, yeah. listen, I salvation. I want my wife to know God. I really do. I want to know God. But I want to enjoy her beauty even more. I want to wake up and love what I see. I don't want to wake up and see her worship and I don't like looking at her. I, and here's the thing. Beauty is subjective to the person. I will never say a woman is ugly. I would say that's not my appetite. But somebody loves how she looks. So it's not for me to say somebody is ugly, beautiful. Yeah, that's not me. I'm not. Somebody like, oh man, she's just ugly. Listen, that's not my appetite. I like what I like, and that's what I know. That affirms me. I want. I want to love what I see. I want to wake up in the morning and say, "Yeah, my feminist eyes." Yeah. So, 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 <laughs> so hold on, Pastor. Pastor, I'm gonna ask you a question. So was it wrong then for because you said it? So I'm gonna go to this pastor. You already said it's not wrong. And your definition is it if if I like booty. <laughs> Is it wrong for me to look for a woman with a booty? Heck no. Hey, we try to act like God didn't make us with eyes. Yes. If he, he didn't just make us to be attracted to someone's spiritual walk. Come, he say that made again. Us to be That's how he made us. And if the church is trying to teach, you shouldn't. What, what the church doesn't know how to balance is the abuse of something versus the standard of God. If looks is all you care about, right, right, you're exactly. abusing something that God's given you. Right, right, right. But it is absolutely top three from God. And if you try to pretend that looks don't matter, you're setting yourself up to fail in the end. Now, hold on. Let me come to the back side. Because looks is what we care about, or sex, 20 to 40, 50, 60. At some point, we're going to get to an age where sex with our wife is not our number one priority. But the legacies that she's building in our kids and how she's managing. So if we make a decision based on what only matters in a certain season of our life, and we talked about evolving, and then we ended up marrying someone that's not a blessing to us when we've evolved into a more mature version of ourselves. So it's, it's important, but it's not the only thing. That's good. So... Let, let's let's say let's 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 go there with with we, we identified that men value and we need sex. It's in the top three. Um, 
and get the mic. Because you said something earlier. So I don't get married. I'm not looking for marriage for just love. I, I, I don't believe love sustains a marriage. I believe that love with a woman who can also help you build a legacy sustains marriages because a builder knows how to get through the hard times. And I believe, right, that we have a lot of men who really do not understand how to love and they really don't know how to build. I thought, I, I thought that love was an emotion. My father told me it is action. My father said, I, you, I chose your mother and I'm going to choose her. Now, do we as men, when we think about marriage, because I'm going to be real with you all, as much as I want to get married, I am a little discouraged of marriage because of the examples that I'm seeing out there in the world. I'm seeing men cheat left and right. I'm seeing men having two, three ladies on the side. And here, here, here's the scourging part. It's not the men cheating. It's the woman who's accepting the cheating and saying, okay, as long as I don't know, as long as he's bringing home the bag, I'm okay with it. For us as men, I want to talk to the married men, right? 30-something years, 17 years. <laughs> you about to get there. Do, what would you all say to single men who are watching this show about marriage? What is one thing that y'all say, hey, you have to put this in place for the marriage to work? And they're going to ask y'all this second question. I need y'all to be real. Do all men cheat? Oh, my God. Well, I don't have a mic. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got to be real. I'm not here to be right. I'm here to be real. So the, so the, the first part of the question was what? What, what, is, what is one piece of advice that you will give to single men for the marriage to work? Like, and, and, and I'm saying this too because ladies are watching and I think ladies need to hear this as well. How do we think? How's it working? And two, I hear this from every single woman that I date. Every man at one point in time of their marriage will eventually cheat. And that bothers me when I hear that as a man. Um, so I, I think the biggest thing, like what we're seeing right now, um, again, it goes back to culture. I think we we don't, I, I think, I'm trying to say this in a way. So basically, I think the younger generation, they we hear about it all the time. They have issues coping. So when we talk about communication and having that raw, God to honest conversation, being open and vulnerable, to me, that is one of the major pillars of marriage, the vulnerability and communication. Um, if you don't have that, if you can't talk about certain things, or like you said, uh, Pastor Stephen actually said, there's three, there's three different, um, you're either going into a storm, you're in the storm, or you're coming out of the storm. And if you are having these conversations and you're going into one of those seasons in your life, the communication is the biggest piece of that because that's what's going to help you get through it. If only one side of the marriage, if you've got a breadwinner, for instance, let's just say that the husband's doing everything and the wife is, is but this is right. This, but it's not a 50 50. The husband is out. He's doing everything. And you're in a storm and you don't have that communication. Your spouse is not going to be able to help you through that storm. You have to be able to get through it together. And I think that that's one of the things that's allowed for. My wife and I, we've been together for 23 years, but have been married for 17. We've been together since high school, and we've gotten that right from the very beginning. And it's having those conversations and knowing that if I don't know how to solve the problem, she is because we've, we've communicated about what the strength or weakness is in that particular issue. So that's major for me, and that's I think is one of the, the pillars for us. So if we see we're going into one, it's, babe, it's coming. What are we doing? And then she's going to look at me and say, well, what do you think you can do? And I'm going to say, well, this is what I think I can do, but I know that this is your strength. Get us through it. And I'm here to support you in that. So let me ask this question. Go deeper. Y'all get the mics, right? Second question. Hold on. I, 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 hold on. I'm about to make the second question even better. <laughs> seriously. No, seriously. Because I asked, do all men cheat? I'm going to go deeper on that. Do good men cheat? So, so... I, I would say, because we, we have this conversation too, 
in 17 years of marriage, depending on what you call that definition of cheating, if we go with the sense of what everyone knows it to be, the physical piece of going to have sex with someone outside of your marriage, the answer to that would probably be no. But does every man cheat when we're talking the emotional piece? Do you, do you go on Instagram? Are you DMing another female? Are you confiding in that female about an issue you're having in your relationship? I think that every man's probably guilty of that, so I would say yes. That is I mean, it's technically emotionally cheating. I mean, here's the thing, and I, I think that it's unfair. Okay, doctor. You, I just, I, I mean, get sick of like, that. I mean, here's like, my, why don't y'all just? <laughs> go, go ahead, doc. I, I, I didn't want to be what? the one to say it. I know you would. You want me? Listen to me. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm talking to you like, like a like a like a brother. Like <laughs> that's not how you started off though. No, no, no. Give an uncle vibes. Big brother advice. I like long walks on the beach. Most men cheat. Most men cheat. It doesn't matter how bleak that sounds or whatever it is. You can go back. 8,000 years ago, it's the same scenario. We can go back to our grandparents. They had families on the other side of town. This, you, I'm just saying it's real. That it's, yeah. You need to hear the truth. Yeah. And the reason why you need to hear the truth is because you can't, you, you can't have a conversation about what's real until you accept the true nature of what's going on today right now. Especially. Most men cheat, and the thing is, women are cheating too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know about Especially most. Today. Women should tell us if most women cheat, because I need some clarity. Huh? Question, question for you. I, I think it's always... I, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. See. Uh, Anthony, we all the same. You, you, you're, the, you're the money guy. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Would you say the majority of people are losing at money? Absolutely. The, give me a number. What percentage of people? 80% of the people in, in America live paycheck to paycheck. 80% of the people in America live paycheck to paycheck. Mm -hmm. All right. And what percentage of people are investing in their future, are going to have wealth to retire, all that other good stuff? That's going to be right around like 11 to 15% of people. So the majority of people don't have investments, aren't ready for the future. So what people will say is, well, 80% of the people are no good with money or don't trust the stock, so I'm scared to invest. Why are we taking the 80% as the standard instead of saying, let me figure out what the 11 or 5% are thank, doing. Thank you. Because I want to be in the 5%. Let me bring it home. So single folks will say, I don't want to get married because 50 or 60% of people end in divorce. Well, you didn't say you don't want to be wealthy because 80% of people aren't wealthy. You're only applying that to relationships out of fear. But the, I'm going to get And we this. call it being real. Listen. I'm going to get in trouble as a pastor. The majority of humanity sucks. They're not my standard. I'm trying to be the top 10%, and I'm not even looking at the 60 as an example of what my future is going to look like because my future is not going to look like that. So what I we do so is we don't use the same financial principles. We don't. We don't. We, if you know this, Anthony, you if you're coaching it. somebody, you're going to get a standard of 10% and say, watch them. Forget the other 90. Cool. Now, I'm not excluding the other 90 didn't happen. And that's not saying I'm not real. I'm going to say watch that. Because what we do is we say all men are this. So that what you just did is culminated every man and made 100%. And you put me yeah. in that boat. You basically, you said me. I said the majority of <laughs> I'm like, wait but a minute. Doc, on. My wife said that you said me. <laughs> the, the, the majority of men that, that have the, the, the majority of men that have the options to cheat yes. will cheat. That's just what but it is. Yes. I mean, no, question to be though. honest, we have to also be realistic about pastors. Forgive me. So <laughs> you got to say? We have to be honest about yourself. the history of people, okay, and the history of relationships. For those of you that don't know, monogamy was a three hundred year war between the Christians and the, no and the nobles between six hundred to nine hundred yep. A.D. And then after nine hundred, right. once they won, monogamy was sent to be set to be the guidance. And the, guide, the guiding standard for relationships. Mm -hmm. So when we say, okay, cool, there is a war amongst this world about the way people should conduct themselves in a relationship. And now we're sitting here and saying, well, 80% of people possibly could be cheating. 
men and women. I just learned that women cheat too. <laughs> <laughs> You that, bro. I just never experienced well I don't know that I experienced it or not but they must be really good but what I'm trying to say is they are, they are. what they I'm are. saying is it's unfair like the whole cheating idea is unfair to people because the fact that people are going to cheat and the odds are against you but the fact that cheating allows you to cheat yourself from a good relationship is the part that bothers me because there's a person who may be loyal to you and not really faithful to yes. you and I do think that there's thresholds so if he's if he's Doing everything he promised you. If he's taking care of you, he's he's still. Thank you. <laughs> That's God. <laughs> he's not doing everything he promised you. But go ahead. No, I mean, but but to be honest, if he says, "Hey, I promise to never cheat on you," he's wrong. Yes. Okay. But I do think that, especially right here. What? If he what? If he promised. No. No, no. Yes. I, no. He, what you say? He's, if he's, you say it again. If he promised, if he promised you to not cheat on you and cheats on you, he's wrong. Okay. Yes. That's yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Now I was lost. Yes. I told so, you. Saying, we were, we were slow down. Content. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Wait, that's why. Wrong. That's why. But what I'm saying is, it's unfair because it's like, yo. Realistically, we go from a religious standpoint. There's many religions in the world, and there's Absolutely. and there's so many religions that allow you to have more than one spouse. Okay. Now I think that a lot of people don't know what or have the courage, especially young men, because we grow up in a Christian country where we're, legally we're only allowed to have one spouse. I was taught since a kid I could only have one wife. It's going to take for me trial and error to have having one wife if I deemed myself to have more than one wife to figure out that that's not going to work for me. And it's unfortunate because then people get broken in this process. And I feel like we're not educating each other to say, hey, guess what? Monogamy is a choice. Okay, monogamy is a choice. It's not a natural thing. It is a, our societal standard and some religious standards as well as polygamy is. But you need to figure out where you fall in line. So you're you know, saying, go, go I, I got to say this because, you know, I, I, I struggle with cheating. You know, I'm just keeping it real. Um, I remember high school, you know, as a youngin, I, 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 yeah, I was a cheater. 100%. Um, and I'm not anymore. And a lot of that is because I did make a decision to be faithful to my lady. But on top of that, I also made a, a decision to be faithful to what I was trying to build. And I think my what I'm what my, my overall goals, the things that I'm trying to build as as not just from a, from, from a financial standpoint, from a relationship standpoint, all of those things I take into consideration whenever I'm thinking about making the mistake of cheating on my lady because I know that it can it can cause calamity in, in a lot of other areas of my life, not just between that relational piece. You know what I mean? So that's what it's about for me. So it's a choice for me. Can I just say, I want to say this one thing. I'm, and let me finish the statement first. Let me finish it first. I'm not faithful to my wife. I'm faithful to God. She benefits from my relationship with him. What is he at? And again, I understand different religion. And I'm not knocking anybody religion. But based off my personal relationship with God, I choose to be faithful to him. What he requires me to do. What he's asking me to do. She simply benefits from that. That's all. That, that doesn't say temptation doesn't come. War doesn't come. Stuff not thrown at me. It's like, okay, Joseph, what, what is it going to cost me for the next five minutes? What is it going to cost me? And I, I am more afraid of what I would lose than what I'm getting ready to gain. That's good. And, that make, and that don't make me perfect. Right. By no means. Right. But if I can answer your first question, one thing I would tell a younger person is this. Don't marry who you are. Marry who you're becoming. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. That's really good. I, I love asking. I was going to say some funny shit. <laughs> <laughs> you say, it. Say, it. Say, it. say it, Rico. Let's go ahead. Carry on. <laughs> Yo, I, I love my brothers, man. Hey, I want I want to end our conversation tonight around this subject, that subject that's been really hitting uh, the internet space, and and the conversation bothers me, um, especially being a money guy, right? And especially being a guy that is evolving, right? Um, um, And, and, and I'm pausing because I want to be sensitive in how I say this, right? Because I think it's, it is a, there is some men who agree with it. And I think there's a lot of men who, who do not agree with it. And this whole conversation around 50-50, uh, 
around the woman comes to the table. And, and here's why I, I'm sensitive in this conversation because I made a, I made a response video, it went viral. Um, Shade Room posted it and this lady lip, sent me this long video. <laughs> and her video to me actually made me pause because she said, I wouldn't have to work as hard and bring as much to the table if men worked harder and brought more to the table. So she was like, so to tell me that 50-50 is not good, when if I come to the table with nothing and he comes to the table with nothing, we have nothing. And I'm like, that's true. So then I go on and tell men, listen, if God put a million dollar idea inside of you, and you're only making $50,000 a year, you're letting down God. So you need to go get that million dollar idea before you focus on trying to get into a relationship because we as men are the providers, right? So then guys call me simp. Then ladies are like, it shouldn't all be on the men because the number one rising entrepreneur in today's day and time is a black woman. So ladies do not want to come to the table with nothing. So I, I think I want to have this conversation as men, right? We've been hearing the ladies clap. Let, let's, 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 let's put the blinds down. And I want to ask this question. Do we want a boss woman in our home? Do we want to go 50-50 with the woman to where she's bringing in the bag, I'm bringing in the bag, and we sharing this bag together? Like, what do we want as men? Do we want that boss woman in the house? And let me, let, let me start with this. <laughs> before, before Doc get the mic, before Doc get the mic. You know what I'm saying? Before Doc gets the mic. Because Doc is ready. <laughs> I think that is a conversation that most ladies probably will not like my answer. And I don't think there is a right or wrong answer here. I, I think I prefer a woman who can help me build, watch this, but she's not building by herself. I like that. And I think that there, there are ladies who want to say, I want to go out here in the marriage and build by myself. You go over here and you build. I have my checking account. You have your checking account. And I give you part of the mortgage. Because here's the thing. I hear a lot of ladies saying, I don't want to ask my husband for nothing. And so for me, I'm like, no, nah, so that's not what I want within my home. I want to build with you, but I don't want a builder on her own. Okay. So that's different. I like that. No... No, 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 no. L listen, and let me give a little background. When you're speaking from a perspective of a man who's built, it's even in the Bible. If a man doesn't have a vision, you shouldn't even be dealing with him in the first place. So if I come to you with a vision... I'm just looking to share the vision with you. I'm not looking for you to boss anything up. <laughs> and the, the other thing that's really, really important is a boss chick doesn't come with feminine energy. What does she come with? And, and so, mm -mm. Be quiet, don't. according to the, how we are defining a boss chick today, she does not come with feminine energy. It is not going to mesh with this masculine energy. Right. We're going to be in arguments. We're going to be in a disagreeable house at home. When I say we're not eating meat, we're not eating this, because we're building this, and we're going to make sure our children don't have diabetes and they're obese, we're not, that's not, it's not a conversation. <laughs> it's not. It's not a conversation. It's not a conversation. Yeah. 
<laughs> so, so if I say that I say that we're doing something that is is positive for our family, positive. Hey, baby, this is how I'm gonna make this five million dollars. I just need you to do this at home. When I come home, that's all I need you to do, baby. When I say we're not eating this way because we need to build a, a legacy that doesn't end up like my family with cancer, diabetes, and hypertension. So we can't get no barbecue? Nope. <laughs> yeah, get some plant-based barbecue. <laughs> but, but, so, but what I'm, what, what I'm, pork chops, bro, but what I, what I'm trying to say is, is that masculine energy want is it always wants a compliment to it. Yes, compliment, not compatible, not compatible. Compatible is boss energy on boss energy. Yes. Complimentary is masculine, feminine, yin and yang. Yes. That's why that's why households are divided. And so from again, just for me, when a man when a man has just for you. yeah, just for you, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, just yeah, for you. So just when a man and typically, when a, man, when a man has means, and I was telling this, this earlier, because I'm in the health profession, when I see women are smarter than men in many ways, more capable than men in many ways. Even in a hospital, I was telling them, like, sometimes I would work like 16, 17 hours. I would see women doing the same thing. Capable. But the toll it takes on them it's very different from the toll it takes on us over time. So every time I'm working with a woman who has fibroids, take the stress out of her life, the, the fibroids shrink. So yes, can you do it? Absolutely. You could probably even do it better. But the toll that it's going to take on you versus me, I'm built to take it. I always tell my girl, I'm built like a brick. Every time she says, you all right? You need No, I'm built like a brick. Keep going. So, it's a, so from my perspective, I do not want a boss in my home, like at all. It's just it's, it because it doesn't. It's not yin yang for me. I'm cool with a little bossy. I'm cool yeah. with a little bossy. I ain't gonna even hold you. Talk about it. Yeah, it's cool. You know, here's the what thing. type of boss though. You gotta identify what you're talking. Yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. What type of boss? So you know, I'm, I'm gonna keep it real. You know, like my lady don't clean the house. We got people for that. Yeah. And I don't yeah. talk to them people. I don't even know about them people. I don't know when they coming. She let me know, look, hey, we got people coming today. You understand what I'm saying? And, and what I'm saying is, I don't want a woman who gonna sit back, right? That's not what I said. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Here's the thing, though. See, see, I don't need a woman that's gonna sit back and watch me go out into the world, right? And take on the world all the way by myself without her at least being the watch for eyes, being that discernment. My lady, you, 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 did you, you, you know, my lady will go to a social event, she ain't gonna say nothing to nobody. But when we get back home, bro, she know everything about everybody that's moving, bro. She got to say, she know everybody's opinion before they even said anything, and she, she know how to read the room. You understand what I'm saying? You ain't and so attention. when you got a woman who just sitting back kind of like lacking, she ain't, she ain't, she just don't want to provide no value to nothing. It's like that right there is a recipe for something, for me, my personal opinion. I just think that's kind of lame. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I want a woman that can add value yeah. to the world so, and me. So are we doing 50-50 as so I wanna, Let me Hell speak on no. this. I'm going from experience. Let so me, are we me, doing 50-50 no, as sir. Let me, let, me, let, me go, let me handle this real quick because I got real experience with this. So all right. So I'm 31. My lady 30. We've been married for one year, right? Yeah, I'm the guy that spent the hundred and fifteen thousand on the way, and that's me. The dumbest thing but, you should. But but let me let me let me let me let me let me go back real quick, real quick. I'm gonna make it fast. We started off 18, 19, of course. At that time, we young. Everything 50, 50, right? Everything 50, 50. Once I decided that I wanted to start my entrepreneur journey when I was like 24, 25, guess what? It went more like 70, 30, and she was 70. But just because a man he may be at 30 and she's 70 don't mean I ain't had that vision. See, more women would feel comfortable supporting if they had a man with a real vision. Just because I was at 30 didn't mean I wasn't a leader. And she respected me still. You see what I'm saying? 
So as we go along, I started my entrepreneur journey. Guess what? She took a job an hour and a half away, right? I said, baby, listen, handle your business. I got this right here. I'm coming to get you, right? About a year later, I got us a house. I came and got her for a government job. I got her some benefits. And then it turned around. Now I'm 70 and she 30. The time we got married, we 100 to nothing now. I got it. Because you was there. You stayed down. You believed in me. And now we're 100 to nothing because she was supportive of what I was doing. And she still respected me as a man. She didn't downgrade me when I wasn't, you know, doing my thing. And that's the problem with a lot of women today. Just because a man may not be up on his feet financially, they seem to down a man, but they, they don't understand a man with vision, though. Nobody got patience no more. So I, I think I have a question that may be more rhetorical of how are we coming up with the equation of 50-50? Mm. And, and when I say that, it's because my, my journey kind of mirrors yours. So my wife, years and years ago, I ain't going to tell her how old you are, baby. Um, <laughs> after she graduated college, I still was struggling. So she paid for everything. 100% of everything. No 50-50, no nothing. It's, yo, um, I, I ain't got no money to pay my light bill. She was like, no, I got you. But here's the thing. Were y'all married respectfully? No, we were dating at the time. And she paid your married. light bill. And she paid my bills. Hear me when I say this. So what? hold on, keep going. But I do want to ask this question. Would you teach your daughter to do the same thing your wife did today? Here, here's, why, here's why I would teach her this. This is the only reason I would teach my daughter this and my younger daughter. I told her what I know God told me. And the journey I was taking was going to cause a little bit of a struggle. And if I could teach my daughter to start with a man and build with a man that's struggling but has a vision. Now today, my wife doesn't work. My wife's at home, but she still works. So to me, it wasn't 50-50. It was her investment. Yeah. Yeah. So but, now she's reaping a reward for her investment, yes. and now we're building together. So when I say 50-50, what do we, and again, it's, it's subjective to everybody. What do you mean when you say 50-50? So most people in the beginning of Paul, it's like, oh, girl, you're so stupid. I can't believe you do that. Not the same when they call it stupid. Like, hey, they members of the church. Like, hey, can we, how can I, so it's, it's. I think we're having the wrong conversation. Exactly. The com and I agree with you, and I think we all do. We just don't like how you're saying it. But here's the deal. <laughs> <laughs> the conversation we're having is how is the money split? And it doesn't matter how the money is split because it's going to change in seasons of our lives. Absolutely. What can't happen is the vision for our household cannot be 50 50 because that's when you're talking about now we're button heads now so watch this the man has to have a hundred percent of the vision and the wife has to be 100 percent bought in it's not 50 50 80 20 it's 100 100 absolutely and the whole you know wives submit to your husband and they don't like that in the bible and all that here's what they don't understand before you say i do you get to pick what vision you're going to submit to. So you've got to hear that vision and make sure that's something I can 100% commit to. And when we're agreeing on the vision, there's not a conflict, there's not arguing, there's not fighting, and it doesn't matter who's paying the bills in this season of our marriage. That's right, and I, I agree gotta... with you wholeheartedly. And I want to say this. <laughs> is, hey, so thank, That's what he meant to say. Wait, thank you for taking what he meant to say it. <laughs> And say it the right way. So that portion, you are absolutely right. 100% of the vision comes from me. That's unquestionable. But when we take that same scripture, there's a difference between vision and submission. Totally. So when it says, why submit yourself to the husband? The scripture prior to that says, submit yourself one to another. So which means there must be... Uh what did it say? Pastor, now you playing with scripture. That ain't what it say? It was, no, no. So in, 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 in the context, that was talking about the church. So the first part of the passage was talking about husbands and wives. The second part of the passage transition was talking about the church in general. And it said, you all submit one into another. It wasn't talking about husband and wife in that sense. So back up, read that one verse right before that one. Yeah, yeah. So one verse right that he so changed just not, not one verse. It was, yeah, okay. So don't make I'm, 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 I'm going to let you rap. I'm going to let you rap. Oh, right Jesus. Don't. We, 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 we not in church today. Okay, so if you take the word submit, to, to meaning be under, I'm going to surrender to your mission. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is not a healthy marriage 
where one person always gets to make the decision. And that's my At point. At some point, you've got to put your preference down. So there is mutual submission. And that's my point. Mutual submission, not vision. Mutual submission to whatever God may be telling you in this season. So let me ask you this question, because I'm not married. We good. And we, we got to wrap this thing up. So are we saying that ladies shouldn't have a vision at all? That's you know what, what I heard. So, so, so here, here's what I I'm heard asking. A, you figure oh, it out it's, and she listens. So I mean, so I, 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 cause I mean, I, I just want to respectfully say this. No, that's not what I'm saying. Okay, cool. I was about to say, my, my woman better have a vision, that but it, it just better align if with If I said that, yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, so, for okay. example, is an employee allowed to have a vision? Absolutely. And then they pick which company where they can live out their vision. They're not hijacking the whole company. It's the same thing. A yeah. woman sh must have a vision. Okay. And then Just she has to sure. pick a man in which she can live out her vision, Absolutely. but not hijack his so that she can live out hers. Yes. Because after, after, after I see the booty, back to the booty, I do want to see what's in her brain. Because if, if, if I am building a multi seven figure business, the booty ain't going to build the business with me. And so I need to know, because you said employee, can employee have a vision? I think the only reason why I've hired the people on my team is because of the vision that they brought into my vision to make it better. And so I just really want to make sure that we, we made that very clear. That ladies, you need to have a vision on top of your beauty. Because if you, if, if the last thing we all want, now you said you want the good looks, but you, you trying to tell me, Rico, we're going to end with you. She got the, <laughs> Rico's my guy, y'all. Listen, I love the way this brother man think. I'll be on Rico's show here next month. I'm looking forward to this one. Y'all pray for me though, real talk though. Anyways, Rico, you trying to tell me, could you date a woman? She is, I mean, that body is just under, just, it's amazing, but that's all she has. Never, I wasn't raised by a woman that was only, you know, possessing one trait. My, see, this is why I say, like, first of all, I disagree when it comes to a boss woman. I admire successful people, woman or man, and the ability to obtain it shows me a lot of about you. And that's the only type of woman I'm willing to actually settle down with. I'm not willing to settle down with one that I have to be the brains of. You know, I, I, yes, yeah, she can submit to my vision, but at the end of the day, visions do change and, 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 and people do change as they're growing together. So if her vision now makes more sense to my vision, I'm okay with it. How do we make, see, I'm not submitting to the vision, I'm submitting to us and whatever we're committed to do. And our vision can vary from time to time in the seasons that we like to talk about. You know, and, and if, if it does go into a point where she is being the breadwinner at that point in time, that's a boss woman because she's capable to run the ship. And I've never met, and I met it, and I know a lot of very successful people in my life. I never met a successful person without a real partner. CFOs, CEOs, VPs, presidents. They're both bosses. There's still a hierarchy, don't get me wrong, but they're both bosses. And for me, if it, well, well, I mean, right now I don't have to do 50-50, thank God. But there was a point in time where I did have to do 50-50. There was a point in time where there was a girl doing 100-0, right? And she was just sold on my vision and, you know, obviously she's not here today. <laughs> but that was my wrongdoings. I take that as a man. <laughs> that was my wrongdoings. <laughs> But I just want I just want a boss woman. But, but more so is there's a willingness that has to be there has there has to be a willingness within us. You know, she has to be able to willing to she has to be able willing to sacrifice whatever we're going to go through. She has to be able to sacrifice whatever she might want for that point in time, as so do I. I, I live on an equal playing field. There is no, hey, my my word is above yours unless it makes more sense. And vice versa. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, Jesus, this conversation tonight, brothers. Nah, she she gonna eat chicken when it come to you. She just eating lettuce.
Lentils. <laughs> Yo, real talk, man. Listen, I, I want to appreciate all y'all uh, for, for joining us tonight. My biggest takeaway uh, from tonight was having uh, a vision um, for yourself, but then also um, knowing that you have the opportunity to decide whose vision you're going to align with to make a vision together. It was nice to hear the men talk about like how they feel about relationships and sex and how they feel about being in a partnership. Because for me, I'm single. And so when I think about being with someone, I'm like, is it really worth being in a relationship? Especially the way the world is today and the way that people are. Just loving the space of just everybody coming together and having you know, their own opinions, but really just being able to express those things readily and just communicate, I think it's so important. So I think it's been an excellent investment in time, so keep up the good work. I do agree that love does not sustain a marriage. There has to be more to it than just love. Love is an action, and you can show someone variously how you love them. However, it's not going to hold a marriage together. In my opinion, I feel like a man needs to bring something to the table. I'm bringing something to the table, you need to bring something to the table. They need to have vision, they need to have goals and ambition about themselves. You don't need to come to me, oh, what are we gonna do? A lot of men today, I feel like they lack leadership skills. They don't know how to lead. They don't have a vision. I will submit. I have a desire to be a wife one day, but I need to see that you have a vision. I have absolutely met a man who was not accomplished and I dated him. And um, it was cool. Like, I, I didn't feel like I needed to, or he needed to have it all together in order for me to be interested in him. Oh, I'm going to be the pillow and the pillar. I am a married woman, happily married. And uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna take away tonight, is to be the pillow and the pillar. Like the gentlemen on the panel were saying, sometimes you have to take the investment in the person and therefore, if that's something that you guys talk about and that's what you want to do moving forward, then take the investment and see what happens. I believe that everyone should have a vision, man and woman. And I think that those visions can be uh, put together to create something powerful because we wouldn't have Michelle and Barack if they didn't both have a vision for themselves. She saw his vision and he saw hers and they created something powerful. Ladies, let's hear him out, please. 